money. Secondly, I don't think it was a TheraBand job. That's number two. Three, if it is a TheraBand job, it's a slimy hand that did it. Four, end of story. I am so not interested in Harry Reid's sex life. I can't begin to tell you. Next story. Um, evil media rip Ben Carson because he said Jews. Evil media rip Ben Carson. He said Jews should have had guns during the Holocaust, which is 100% true. I've studied this in great detail. The vermin in the media don't understand anything about anything, let alone the Holocaust. And they're using the Holocaust to advance their liberal agenda. But I have studied it from Jews who lived through it and survived. And they told me, every last one of them, had they had guns. And they explained how it would have worked. I, I do have a minute to do this. This is very important since guns are in the air right now. Most liberals are afraid of guns because they're on medication and suicidal. I know this for a fact. I've met liberals who say, no, no, we don't have guns in the house. I said, why? Well, go off. See, a guy like Larry David thinks a gun sits in a drawer waiting to go off. They don't even know what a gun is. They know it's sitting in the drawer, and they think it could just, by itself, shoot off in the middle of the night and kill them or their, or their pet. They don't know how it works. So they're afraid of gun. No, no, no. Or they're afraid that they'll pick it up in anger and shoot themselves. So they don't want you to have a gun because they're psychologically impaired. But let me explain the whole Holocaust thing to you from the gun point of view. This was told to me by a Jewish psychiatrist who lost his parents in the Holocaust. And he told this to me in 1984. We were talking about guns once. And he said to me, listen to me. If every Jew had had a gun in Germany when Hitler started, he said, when the Gestapo came, and they came quietly, by the way, initially. This started quietly. The equivalent of the Secret Service uh, or the DHS in that time was called the Gestapo. They came around in suits and ties. They knocked on your door like this. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Shapiro. Yes. Please open the door. It's the State Gruber Huber Schmuber Gestapo. And then they would come in and politely tell the Jews to pack their things and come with them. They did not forcibly remove them. And this psychiatrist told me that if the Jewish person in the house, the male in particular, had had a gun, he should not have come out blazing. He should have said, yes, sir. Please give me a moment. May I pack a bag? And the Gestapo in the beginning would have said, yes, take your time. You're allowed to bring one bag with you. And this doctor told me if the Jew had come out very meekly and had pulled out a gun and shot one of them or both of them in the apartment building in Berlin or wherever it was, the whole Holocaust probably would have been derailed for two reasons. One, because the average German didn't like any kind of disorder. They didn't like any violence around them, and it would have upset the entire German society that would have known that Jews were being rounded up. There's your little argument for guns, and you could send that one, you can send that one to bronze. I want you to put that one in a bronze plaque and never forget what I said to you. I'll be back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Having the last legal gun shop in San Francisco where law-abiding gun um, owners can actually go to can possibly stop it's a free market in, 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 over in San Francisco I'm not familiar with the um, individual uh, I did see in the news that the shop was closing and it is my understanding that they made uh, a decision, a business decision that, uh, that, that, that shut them down basically. well the regulations didn't shut them down they didn't want to live within the regulations and, and so they decided to go elsewhere. So that was a private sector decision on their part uh, to do that. And I'm not even sure all the regulations that they were right, concerned you get the about being all the Here's the cuckoo clock Pelosi denying that her regulatory harassment closed the last gun shop in her district. Now, this is the same woman who says releasing terrorists from Guantanamo would be an economic economic opportunity for Illinois. But closing the last gun shop in the city is not an economic opportunity. All right, play the cuckoo clock, because this is the only thing we've got left, is the cuckoo clock, to summarize the entire Democrat socialist uh, regime. Anyway, what else is in the news? The global warming. Can you believe this? I don't even want to play that one. I wrote a whole chapter on it, Zero Science, which I'm holding my fire on in Government Zero. I got to tell you that Amazon has been flooded with your advance orders. I guess people want to have it the minute it's available probably even a day before the bookstores because it's not going to be in the stores till the 27th and they want a first printing 
Do you know that one of my earlier books, Healing Children Naturally, can only be found, the original editions, on a used site for $85 or more? I was shocked. And that's why I reissued it for $9.95 in my store on my website. But my books are collector's items. And I think that's why people are rushing to get the first printing. I'm just telling you like it is. Laugh if you want. Squirm if you want. It's real. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. Come on, girls. Put on those helmets. You don't actually have to fly that F-16 or that F-21. Come on, girls. Get in the, get in the pilot seat, girls. The old Prez wants a picture of girls in the Air Force. Come on, girls. Yeah, nothing can stop the Army Air Corps. Well, that was then. This is now. Welcome to the Savage Nation. Now let's go to the callers. You want to call about something? It's Friday. Aren't you supposed to be a normal person that's beautiful out in the Bay Area? We got our typical gorgeous uh, October weather when the winds died down and it's our real summer. There's a golden light to the air. The nights are gorgeous. It's Fleet Week this weekend, which means the beautiful Blue Angels will be flying over the skies, wakening up the drug addicts in North Beach and downtown, shocking them out of their cafe slumbers as they collect their uh, disability checks for being stupid, lazy, and dumb and faking disability so they can write screeds against the government. Uh, they all hate the uh, Blue Angels. Jealous, that's all. They're jealous because they can't even drive a car straight. The last thing they drove was a Volkswagen in the 1960s, which they crashed into a hydrant. So they resent the guy who could fly a jet in such formations. I go to a rooftop and watch them rehearsing. They're actually going to break the sound probably in about an hour out here in the Bay Area. Then Sunday is Columbus Day, uh, the parade. A great tradition in the Italian-American community. I love to go to North Beach and sit in a coveted seat and take a look at the floats going by. I like all of the floats except the politicians. When I, they come by, I get up out of my chair and I turn my behind on them. I, I hope they don't show up again. I, don't, I love the floats, the youth marching bands, the military bands, the Columbus-themed stuff. But those, those politicians in the most corrupt city in America, I can do without I feel like I'm in New Orleans in a bad Mardi Gras movie. And it's black and white and it's Austin Wells is the only one who could film it. It suddenly loses its color for me. It's no longer being shot in Kodachrome, if you know what I'm saying. The minute I see one of these degenerate politicians on a float, I see Austin Wells in, in Touch of Evil going by. And I, everything turns black and white for me. Grainy. Grainy. The camera angles are all wrong. Okay. Here we are. The Savage Nation. Tim, KSFO, welcome to the Savage Nation. Dr. Savage. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, I just wanted to give you a call. We're uh, here over for Fleet Week in San Francisco, and I wanted to know if you're interested in coming to see our pocket ship. Which ship are you on? We are on the USS Somerset. Well, I've got a little secret for you. I have an invitation, but I'm not going to say when because I don't want people who don't like me to look for me there, but uh, I'm actually planning on visiting the Somerset at some time. Of course, now that I've said it, i got to be very careful and I don't walk on, on the, unprotected on the deck at night. Yes, sir, we'll take care of you. <laughs> oh, that's what I'm saying. So, Lieutenant, how do, I, uh, how do I get that personal bodyguard from you? You know, one of the things I love about Fleet Week is that you know, I apply to go on. As a member of the media, they always are very cordial to me. And they send you the invitation. And when you show up at Pier 3032 in your car, I'm going to show up on foot because it's very impossible to get near that ship. I love seeing the security, the level of security. The young kids, 18 years old with machine guns. It inspires me in a city as crazy as this. You have to go, like, through these barriers. And then the, the kids have sidearms and the M4s. It's beautiful. Uh, and then you climb up the, the, you know, I'm a boater, so I, I love the ship. And you, the uh, Somerset is what? It's a, uh, a a troop carrier? What actually is the mission of the of the Somerset? Uh, yes, sir. It's an amphibious ship, uh, LPD. Um, we transport Marines. Um, oh, it's a so it's a big, big, it's a big ship. It's pretty, it's cavernous inside. I remember I was on another one years ago. You carry, you carry half tracks and, and tanks, don't you, occasionally? Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, amazing. 
It's a great thing to go aboard a Navy ship. And uh, then there's uh, food, there's drink, and there's all of the uh, good people on that ship. Well, are you going to be uh, on that ship this weekend? How do I look for you? I will. You just, uh, I'll give you my name and uh, you ask for Yeah, give it to my producer. Me. Give us your cell phone. So when I, Michael Savage, show up, I'll call you directly. And you'll give me a cook's tour and make sure I can walk around on the deck uh, in the darkness of the night and take a picture of San Francisco from the, from the ship. I love it. It gets cold up there at night. It is the Savage Nation. Stay in the line. I guess I will go. I wasn't going to go. Then I was going to go. Then I'm ambivalent towards everything I do in my life. Do you know that? Raise your hand if you're like me. You make a plan. You look forward to it. You spend a lot of mental energy getting the invitation. You plan it. And then when the day comes, you don't want to go. What is that about me? I don't understand myself in this regard. As I go, okay, I'll go. You know, well, what am I going to really do? I'm going to have a beer and some bad appetizers? I don't know. But, oh, yeah, but you like the people. It kind of it's something and you enjoy it. Maybe I'll go. Then you don't want to go. Then what's, it's not worth it. Then you do go. That's the beauty of not being a politician is that you don't really have to do anything. Politicians, the reason they're so miserable and they lie about everything is they don't really want to be there. They just want to collect the grift under the table. Unfortunately, I have to give lying speeches to do so. So that's why they're always unhappy and they're always lying to you. Nothing can stop the army. Play the Navy thing for that lieutenant who called the show. Not the anchors away one, but the, uh, the new Navy, Obama's Navy. Come on, girls, let's see you in the captain's quarters of the ship. I really love the new ships. It's great. It looks like a high school I used to teach in. You go below, you look like you could never come off the ship alive. I don't know how they survive the... How do they sail a, th a thing today with what goes on below? Who actually runs the thing? But maybe I'm underestimating the, uh, the, new, the new Navy. That's a very good place if you want to get pregnant without a husband. The Navy takes care of your whole life. I mean, it's a pretty good thing. You get a nice uniform. You get a, a child care for life. You don't have to really do anything. Because if, if, you, if someone calls you out on the fact that you joined the military just to have a, a, a baby and have them take care of you, they get uh, sued for some kind of a violation of uh, something in the government. I don't know what. 855 Let's take some callers. Johnny on KSFO. Welcome to the Sabbath. I can't see the lights now. My eyes are blurry already. Here we go. Line A, Joey, what's on your mind? Johnny from Berkeley. Yes, sir. What's happening? I uh, was overly medicated by a doctor in Marin County with 200 milligrams of MS cotton slash morphine plus 30 milligrams of methadone at night plus various other pills that he felt that I needed. Um, All right, so you were drugged by a doctor who was, who was not a good doctor. He just put you on drugs. What, you were, you were a smart kid? What was the reason? Uh, the reason was double hernia and arthritis. Uh, severe rheumatoid arthritis. No, wait, now you're confusing me. So the doctor did the right thing. He gave you medication for rheumatoid arthritis. That could be life-saving. Well, the embryo that he also gave me, which was 50 milligrams injected once a week, I do believe with methotrexate was enough. Um, okay, I well, I don't understand why you're calling the show. You're giving me your medical history. You're telling me you were given... Uh, a drug that I know is life-saving because I know someone with RA who's, was, whose life was saved by Emerald. So what is your complaint? I'm not complaining. I'm only thanking you to... I'm thanking you for helping me get off the MS cotton and the morph and the, and the methadone. Um, okay, I'm sorry. I, I misinterpreted what you were saying because Emerald's a lifesaver. Yes, I know. Right? Yes, it is. And so how did I get you off the oxycodone? Uh, well, the MS cotton and methadone. Have it, by listening to you, knowing that uh, the dangers... Somebody was in... By listening to me and realizing someone in worse pain than you wasn't on drugs, you realize you could take it? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right, that's nice. I'm sending you a free copy of a book called Government Zero. Hey, this just came out. Play the breaking news, Robert. Just got it in my hands right now. Oh, beautiful. this from i did a people's pundit did an interview with me yesterday now i'm going to preface this by saying i never heard of people's pundit before but it's run by a very very patriotic conservative young man who's 34 years old with two children and he's built his little business on his own and he wanted to interview me for my new book government zero now normally i'll be honest with you i do almost no interviews and i go on almost no shows even dur during a book tour i try to limit it 
to a few national shows, Laura Ingram, Alex Jones, a few shows on Cumulus, and the local show on KSL.